All righty, looks like we're ready to go. Welcome everybody. City of Peoria and the Economic Development Services Department welcomes you today. Thank you for taking time out of your day. My name is Debbie Pearson and I run the Small Business Program for the Economic Development Services Department. I am excited to have invited Michael Simpson of Six Fine Media back to present and teach you about all this crazy video promotional marketing. But what I am learning is it's not so crazy. It is an absolute marketing tool for you small business owners. It's a must have. So pay attention, gather up what you can learn, and if you have any questions, Michael and Jeremy will most certainly be able to assist with that afterwards. I'd also like to recommend that you hang out because Karen Taylor Rowan with the Phoenix Business Journal will be speaking briefly afterwards telling, her, uh, telling you about different ways you can use the journal to get leads for your businesses. And then she's also going to have that fabulous drawing for that $170 book of lists. So I'm going to hand it over to Michael Simpson now. Please give him a round of applause. Yay! I got my mic on here. Can you all hear me okay? This is coming through okay? Good, 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 good. Well, welcome, Thrill Seekers. Good to see you all. Thank you for your time here. I just want to say thank you again to Debbie Pearson and the city. I don't know if you realize what a resource you have in this lady. She works tirelessly to promote small business. She's an advocate. Yes, you are. You're an advocate for everybody in this room. So thank you again, Debbie, and thank you for your time. So we are going to have fun today. As soon as I get this thing to work. There we go. Lights, camera, action, that's the name of the seminar. This is an old term that comes actually from the silent movie era where they, they had to call for the lights first to bring the lights up. The lights used to make a lot of noise, which didn't bother them when they first started because there wasn't any audio. But the lights generated a lot of heat. So they turned them off during rehearsal period, then turn them back on. So they would say lights, lights would come up, stabilize, call for the camera, and then action. And that's what we're going to have today. We're going to have... The lights are on, we've got cameras, and we're going to have a lot of action, and we're going to have fun doing it. Uh, just some little um, uh, housekeeping notes here. Cell phones, please put them on silent running. And uh, if you have to take a call, absolutely. We're business people. Go, go take your call. Take care of business. There will be no breaks today. We're going to run through this information. If you have to get up and, and use a restroom, have to go outside for any reason, don't worry about it. Go ahead. But if you, if you leave early, I have somebody across the parking lot with my Barrett 50, 50 caliber. So, <laughs> <laughs> so be careful. Okay, the class structure. We're going to talk about the elements that you're going to need to mount a production. It doesn't make a difference if it's your, your, a small video for your company, a major motion picture, or television show. These are the same type of elements that you need to to uh, think about and take care of in order to have a, um, a compelling product at the end. So one of the major elements of the class um, we're going to be talking about are the, the three elements of, of production, which are pre-production, and that's where everything is worked out beforehand. That's where you should be spending most of your time. Most of your de decisions about what you're going to be saying, where you're going to say it, and who you're going to say it to needs to be taken care of in pre-production. From that we'll go on to production and there's some equipment choices you have and then post-production which is editing and we're also going to talk about distribution and, and promotion of your, your product. One of the things I'm asking you to put right up front today is courage. You're going to be given the tools today to do a, a, a lot of things for your business with, with video but it's going to take courage to, to do it especially if you're going to be in front of the camera. This is going to be very challenging for a lot of us. I've been doing this for a lot of years, and still when I get in front of the camera, I don't like it. I just don't like it. I feel uncomfortable. So but I'm going to give you some hints where you can kind of control those emotions and bring that courage. And courage, according to one definition that I uh, found, was the state or quality of mind or spirit that enables one to face danger, fear, or vicissitudes with self-possession, resolution, valor, bravery. I love that word, vicissitudes. So that's what we're going to bring. You guys are going to bring to the table, and I'm going to give you some tools to be able to use it. So the goals of the class, and these are basically my goals for you, is that I want to erase the fear that, you're, that you, is going to come up, well up within your, your, your psyche about not being able to do this. 
and you can do this. I have faith in you that you can do it. I'm going to remove stumbling blocks that you have built around yourself over the years that you don't want to be on camera, you don't want to have your picture taken, and now your, your pictures, your video is going to be up there on the internet for everybody to see. And that takes some dealing with. So I'm going to give, give you the tools that you can use now so you can dominate your competition. A little history about our company and myself. Um, my partner and co-founder is Jeremy Simpson. He's worked with me in various businesses since he was 10. I used to get, get <laughs> there was one project we worked on in Montana and uh, he was carrying lights around like this and I got such a rash from people that, that really were angry with me for you know, having him carry a light around. Well, he wasn't getting paid for it, so <laughs> he wasn't working. So, but he is self-taught in in web design. Um, he, when he was in California, he was a, a web designer for various uh, motion picture companies. He was the uh, dialogue editor, dialogue editor, sound effects editor for Modern Warfare Two, which was a very popular, popular. Um, Modern War for three. Okay, I can't keep track of them. So, anyway, so he is—he's the senior designer of the company. We also have a copywriter, of social media management, and that's Carrie Holt over there. Hi, Carrie. <laughs> she does all our our uh, managing uh, our clients' social profiles. So this is the most difficult area. This whole two hours for me is right now, where I have to tell you about myself. So. It, uh, and I imagine a lot of you are out there the same way. They have difficulty talking about yourself. I can teach all day long. I can, I can you know, tout other people. But when it comes to me, it, it, I just feel uncomfortable doing it. Um, so I've been in the visual communications field uh, since about 1970, with about 30 years of that in the uh, motion picture and television industry. I won two Emmy Awards for cinematography. Um, I wrote for the series Beretta. I've worked on hundreds of TV shows, dozens of ma major motion pictures, Animal House, Blues Brothers, Cheech and Chong pictures, a lot of stuff that I couldn't show my kids when they were younger. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, got out of the industry because it, it's really a young person's game and uh, it wasn't very good for you know, keeping my family together. So that's, that's why I left the industry. Started my own production company and we did a show called Fishing Expeditions Television where it was on the Outdoor Channel for five years. We traveled all around the world fishing, my partner and I. He was a pro fisherman, he was on camera, I was a producer director. But we've been out to the Bering Sea, we've been in Nicaragua, up the Amazon, Finland, uh, all over Mexico, Hawaii of course, all over the US, so we traveled a lot. And this was all prior to uh, uh, September 11, 2001 when we had the attack on our country. But, it used to be a lot easier to travel back then. I don't do much traveling like that anymore, but um, I'd probably still have that business going, but uh, you found out that my partner is stealing from me, so <laughs> that wasn't a whole lot of fun. <laughs> so um, when my son was in California, we were talking back and forth about what I've been hearing from small business people about the difficulty in, in getting a website on. They had two options at the time. They had either you could go with a template like a, a GoDaddy or, or some of those other templates, but you don't have any control over that, very little control. Or you could hire a web designer. And once you pay them thousands of dollars to do your website, you can't get a hold of them again. They kind of disappear if you want to make changes. So we developed a system. Our business plan was to put videos in the back end of the, their website so they could go in at any time and uh, make a, a new post, add video to their website. They could do it themselves. If they ran into some problems, then they could call us. But it helped them. It helped us. So here we go. Why video? Well, video is accepted. Uh, YouTube, I'm sure you all hit, heard of YouTube, in the 2011 they had over one trillion views. One trillion. What are people using YouTube for? What kind of videos are they putting up? They're putting up short little welcome videos, they're putting up training videos, they're putting up product demonstration. There's a whole series of videos called box opening videos where people get a product or uh, something that they want to demonstrate and they actually have the box that they just got from the post office and they open it up and they say this is what this looks like, this is what this looks like. 
and this is how this works. So this is very beneficial to people who are interested in looking at that product. They, they, they can actually see somebody opening up the product for the first time and, and, and taking a look at it. So video is very accepted. It's uploaded. There's over one hour of video uploaded just to YouTube every second. That's a ton of video. So I know you're saying, how do we compete with 60 hours of video being uploaded to YouTube every minute? How, is, how are people going to find my, my video? I'm going to show you. It's not that difficult. But we have to discuss and what's stopping you. You've self-created uh, stumbling blocks, which we talked about before. Um, there's the three T's that I call them, and that's part of your stumbling blocks, and time, tech, and treasure. Do you want to invest the time to, to learn about this? Do you want to invest the time to do it? If you take that out of the equation, if you say, okay, I'm going to invest the time, I'm going to get it done, then that, that video is up there on the, on the web working for you 24-7. You've got it out there. You've shipped that product. You've launched that product. You might be um, concerned with the technology. Uh, I've had some people that are, are just a little bit beyond email, and so they feel very, com very uncomfortable with doing this. So there are things that you can use that are so automatic, and we're going to talk about those today. And of course, the treasure. What's it cost to put all this together? Are you going to hire somebody to do it? Probably not. You're going to try it yourself. And if you try it yourself, are you going to fall flat on your face or are you going to be successful? I'm here to help you be successful. I believe in you guys. You can do this. There's no trick to it. Even though that's the way the motion picture started out as being a trick because it's willing suspension of disbelief, but I don't need to go there. Okay, who's tried video in the class? Awesome. And your results have been... So-so? Okay. I'm not seeing yes. <laughs> it's working for me. <laughs> uh, it's hard to measure. It's, it's hard, hard to measure. Well, there's analytics we'll go into, and we'll, we'll talk about that. So, um, but if you've tried video, you probably have some limited success, and there are probably certain elements of the seminar that are going to be a little bit below you, but you, are, you will walk out with, with things that, that you can put to use today. So... But if you got poor results, uh, frustration, sometimes you feel like your head's going to explode, just can't take it anymore. That's the way I feel when Jeremy's trying to teach me Photoshop. I mean, he is just. <laughs> so we get into pre production. First thing you got to decide who's your audience? Who are you going to talk to? This is actually the first thing that that uh, producers of major motion pictures talk about. Who are going to make this movie for? Who's going to put their money down at the box office? So who is your audience? And we'll help you define that in, in a little bit here. But also, you need to find out what's your story. And I don't mean your life story. Everybody's got a life story, and everybody's life story is interesting. But you've got to take those elements out of your story of your business, and that's what you need to be talking about. If you're going to be talking about customer service. If you say, our company has great customer service, people are just going to look away. They're, it doesn't work. But if you talk about, say that, say you hit your business was um, putting in garage door openers. And on your video, you said, one of our clients, we made a mistake with one of our clients, or you probably wouldn't say that, but uh, one of our clients had a problem with their garage door opener and wouldn't open. And we went out there on a Sunday morning, got that garage door to work so they could get to church. Wow, that says a lot more than we've got great customer service, doesn't it? So this is, this is your story. These are the elements you have to find within yourself. The question comes down, what do I say? And this is the, one of the biggest questions that I, I get from, from our clients. I don't know what to say. Here's tip number one. You are the expert. What business are you in? Pardon me? I do herbs. Herbs? If, if I was looking for herbs and your video was on your website, I'd listen to what you said, would say, because I don't know anything about it. I've come to you to find out what you can tell me. Yeah, don't get them started. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're going to have a time limit on your video. <laughs> no, but, but guys, you are the expert. Now, 
really, I, I can't stress that enough, that you know more about what you're doing than, than the people coming to your website. And that's why they're coming to your website. And there's ways that you can drive traffic to your website. But think about that. Think about what questions would people be asking when they're coming to your website. What are your FAQs? And everybody knows what FAQs are? Okay, yeah. Uh, one of our frequency asked ask questions is, probably the number one is, how do I get to page one on Google? It's like people want a magic bullet. They want a pill, they want to write a check. Here, tomorrow I won't want to be on page one. It doesn't happen that way. We, we, have, we have classes that go into that a lot. But discuss with your clients. Find out why they're doing business with you. Why are they coming back to do business with you? What is, what's attracted them to you? Is it location? Are they in, in this, in, within a, a two mile radius? Well, if, if they're coming to you because they're close to you, then that might tell you that there are other people within that, that area that should be made aware of your presence. And you can ask your clients, just like what, what I just went over. Ask your clients why they're doing business with you. Another question about video I get a lot is how long should it be? Any ideas anybody want to throw out how long a video should be? Good for you. You've done some research. But your favorite Super Bowl commercial is how long? 30 seconds. So if you're between 30 seconds and three minutes, you're probably OK. But I don't have the skill set to boil my message down effectively and get it said in 30 seconds. I just I can't do it. So. You have to look at that 30 second to three minute range. Two minutes is even better. But don't complicate your, your message. So uh, keep it short. Uh, another question is where would I shoot my video? My basic answer to that is a place that you have control. You don't want to go into um, uh, Scottsdale Mall to shoot your video. You don't want to go out on a public street unless you're really good about delivering your, your lines. So if, and this is all part of pre-production about deciding where you're going to shoot your video. If you say, okay, I don't want to shoot it in my house. There's no area in my house that I like. There's nothing in the yard that looks appealing, but there is a park that's close by. I'll go over and take a look at that. So you, you go over, you take a look at the park, you look at it on like a Wednesday afternoon. Everything looks cool. It's a big enough park, and you're away from uh, any sort of playground equipment, so there's not going to be any, any children, children's noise, and you're not close to any busy streets. So that's pretty cool. And you've got an area that maybe has some trees behind you. So you, you got some help coming on, and you're going to shoot it Sunday morning because you figure that's even better, that nobody will be there. And you have some friends come out to help you, you know, drag out the equipment. And you get out there Sunday morning and the parking lot is packed. There is a youth soccer tournament going on. There's 1,200 parents. They're all screaming. They've got vendors. They've got bounce houses. You look like a jerk because you've just wasted your Sunday morning, and your friends are here to help you, and they're going, not again, pal. We're not going to do that anymore. So you should scout locations at the, at the time that you're, you're going to anticipate shooting it. And so you can see where the, uh, how the light is, is uh, playing on the background. And you know, be aware of your environment, what's, what's going on. We, are you going to need permits, releases, police protection? Yeah, probably not police protection. Uh, probably not permits either, unless you're on city property or government property and you've got somebody with a badge that comes along and asks for your permit. So then you better have one. Uh, releases. You can get you download uh, model releases on the internet. Just Google it. If it's somebody besides a, a direct family member that's on camera, you better get a release because you don't know what their attitude is going to be like. You know, six months down the road, especially if they work for you now, and six months they don't, and they say, "I never gave you permission to do that." Where's you know, where's your proof? Simple thing that I do with my camera is just before I shoot, I come up to them, I say. Could you spell your first name and your last name for me? They give it to me. I said, you realize we're going to ask you questions and put you on video, right? Yes. Do we have permission to use this video? Yes. At your release. Very easy. And it stays with the tape. It's not a piece of paper that will get lost. 
what you have to do now is write the script. And I didn't say get the script written. I said write the script, which means you have to do it. Why do I say that? Because this is your thought, thought process. I want your words on the paper. And then the next step, after you've read that script, and say, yeah, this, this kind of works, I want you to boil it down to bullet points. So you just have a series of bullet points on a page. Those bullet points will cue your thought process to uh, bring back the words. Don't try and memorize a script, because you won't do it. Don't try and read it off a teleprompter, because it'll look awful. You'll have amateur stamped over your forehead. You don't want that. You keep, another message I, I'm going to keep pounding on you today is don't do anything to distract the viewer. Don't do anything to pull them away from your message, the delivery of your message. That means anything technical, with special effects, or location, audio, keep it simple. Now, there's a lot of equipment we can use. We have choices to, and one of them you probably got in your pocket or your purse, and that's a phone. It's probably not this one, but um, <laughs> phones you can use. I've seen a lot of video on YouTube that um, uh, use iPhones and smartphones, and it looks pretty darn good if they get the lighting right. And we're going to talk about that in a second. But what I've seen a lot of people do, when you take a picture, you go like this, ah, smile, good. And when they do video, they hold it like this. What, what, what's that going to be like on, on the screen? It's going to be like this. And we've had a client do that. And they call Jeremy and says, my video doesn't look right. And he looks on it and he, and he says, well, you held the camera like this. He said, can you fix it? Well, we can put it like this, but everybody's got to look at it like that. <laughs> so they're in our... On, there, on our handout, there is a, a resource page that's on our website you can go to. And we've, we found a piece of equipment that will clamp onto your phone like that and hold it like that. So, cheap little tool. Cheap little tool. OK, some of the other cameras uh, that you could use, if you're going to dust off Uncle Bob's VHS camera, uh, I think the door is opening right now. You could probably leave, so because that's not going to work for you. And you're going to talk about shooting yourself in the foot. You need current technology. I don't mean the best technology, but the current current technology. This is a picture of my camera that I used on the um, on the fishing show. This camera went all around the world. Not exactly this camera, but this my camera like this. This was forty-two thousand dollars with a camera. This takes better video. <laughs> what are you going to use? Yeah. So that did not shoot HD. This does. We got some drawbacks with this, and we'll go into that for a second. But there's some other cameras here that I brought. This, this is my camera that I'm using right now. It's so cool. This is a camera that I started off with a little while ago. It's just, it's a mini DV camera. You know what mini DV is? It's a small tape format. What I liked about this, because I used to shoot videos by myself, is you can turn this around, I can see myself. So I can see if I'm getting in frame or out of frame, which, which is useful. Bad thing about this, it did not have a uh, separate mic input. This is a camera that started um, a big revolution. Anybody in real estate? I bet you've used one of these, a flip cam. No? Nope. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is, um, I had a lot of fun with this camera. Um, this shoots HD also, and it um, um, has internal storage for the, for the video. But it has a little flip out arm there, and it's a little USB arm, goes right in a computer and downloads in your computer. So I, I think there's about 30 minutes of video you can put on here, which is plenty. But it does not have a, a, a mic input. The biggest complaint about user-generated video on the web is audio. They can't understand it. People will put up with a lot of crappy video if they can hear what you're saying. So keep that in mind. And it's very simple. Uh, this is a, um, a Kodak ZI-8. They don't make these anymore. I'm really sad. When they first came out, 
Uh, I bought, I think it was about $140, and I was really happy with it. Then all of a sudden I saw a price drop, it was down to $90, so I bought another one. And I, I just love them. It has an external mic input. It has a, a slot for a um, SD card, little SD cards here. This little SD card, 16 gigabytes, does about an hour and a half of high definition video. My camera that I use in the fishing show, 30 minutes. So you can pull a lot of stuff. This is not meant for long time storage. So keep that in mind. Just because it's safe, uh, secure, digital, uh, you need to transfer that to your computer and to back it up to another drive. And then you can reformat that and use it again. I've spent so many years with tape-based cameras, and there's so many problems with them. Heads get clogged, and you don't know that till you get back and take a look at the tape. And then you've got streaks across your picture, or you've got a, a tape crease in it. So if you can stay away from tape-based uh, uh, cameras and, and go to secure digital, that's all the better. This has an external mic input. I don't know if I said that or not, but this is just really awesome. I really love these little cameras. And look at the little tripod I got. Set that up on your desk, take it with you, put it in your briefcase. And you're at Starbucks, you can have a little microphone coming to it. You can do a little web log right there. So, audio. Like I said, the biggest complaint there is, is poor audio, either muffled, uh, background noise. And that's because people, a, a lot of them, are using just the microphone on the camera. And you really have to be this close to get good audio. Unfortunately, when you're this close, what you're going to see is a big 60 minutes close up. <laughs> this. It's not going to be comfortable. That's when we get into talking about composition, we're going to talk about that. You, just, you don't want to make the, the viewer uncomfortable for anything. They've got to listen to your message. And if they might not even realize that the composition is making them feel uncomfortable, but it can. So th this is all you need to, to uh, do audio. Just teasing. <laughs> you don't need any of that stuff. I'm a visual guy. I hate audio. I really do. I hate all the cables and everything. It just drives me nuts. I don't understand it. So I, I just operate at a level where I can get by. And uh, then I have Jeremy take a listen to it. Does this sound OK? <laughs> then we do some processing to it. But um, you can buy a little microphone like this. I got this on Amazon. And this is like uh, $29. And the link to it is in our page. It's got like a 20-foot cord. So you can hook it up to your little ZIA camera or your phone. You can't go directly into your phone with this. You have to get an adapter cable. So we can, we can talk about that in a second. But if you have this and you have this, your production studio, your broadcast television station. You are putting out your message on the internet. You can be doing it from the beach in Belize if you want to. How does that sound? Yeah. I can't tell you the years I've spent hauling equipment in and out of locations, all that heavy stuff, and you're coming down to this, I'm going, oh, baby, I love you. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is really sweet. So it's very easy. We, uh, if you want to graduate to a, a wireless microphone, there's all sorts of wireless microphones that range from maybe you know, 120 bucks to several thousand dollars. So, uh, but this, a, a 20 foot cord on this, in your little, you know, your little Kodak ZI8 or whatever, whatever camera you're using or your phone, you've got capability of walking around. So you're not locked into one spot. You've got, got, got some movement. You can walk to the camera a little bit, you can go sideways, and you still have good audio. So audio is ultra important. Reflectors. Here's the kind of reflectors that we used in, in the motion picture business. It's called a shiny board. It's 4 by 4 It's very heavy. Uh, the board itself cost about, uh, yeah, probably about 600 bucks. The standard was another 300 So you got, you're pushing 1000 bucks just for this. The, um, any production company would have probably 
about 10 to 15 of these on their truck. So the expense is horrendous. You've got to have somebody stand by. You've got to have sandbags on it and everything. It's just a real thing. What we use is just a little flex fill. I'm sure you've seen photographers use this. This is, uh, and this would be used if the sun would be behind my back and I'm in backlight or I got a side light in. You'd want to bring it over here and just bounce the light into it a little bit. Even if you've told me that so many times, I almost just now moved over and did it. <laughs> <laughs> So these, that's a simple thing you can use. Another thing you can use is just a piece of poster board. That works. That's 99 cents. Another thing you can use is beadboard. It's, it's, it's rigid insulation. It comes in four by eight sheets. You whack it in half, you got two four by fours. Put them on, have somebody hold them on each side of the talon, and you got a nice light. So that's something very easy that, that you can do, very cheap. I, you know, the, the uh, wind, windshield protectors that people have in their windows, I've seen some of those that, that have not a silver side, but a white side. And that'd be perfect. I mean, you've always got your reflector with you. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're on camera, there's, there's things that you should do. And I, I talked about boiling your script down into bullet points. Now, this is something that I've done quite a bit. And here's a, a music stand. I got this on, on Amazon. It was like $29. Here's my little netbook. Here's another ZIA camera. I got the microphone coming out here. So one of the problems of working by yourself, I can't see how I'm framed. So I put a mark on the floor. I stand here. And I think this looks about right. Then I, I push, the, push the button to record, come back here. Da, 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 da. Go back there, take a look at it, adjust the framing. So keep working that back and forth. <clears throat> I got a little bit ahead of myself here. So uh, we're, we're talking about the tablet uh, teleprompter. And teleprompters are used in news business. They're used in politics. Um, every time, anytime somebody's giving a speech, they're using a teleprompter. Teleprompters can run several thousand dollars. There's ones now that are coming out that you can buy that are ready-made that you use your tablet with. You can download free software. You can Google that and download free software. And uh, then the, these uh, tablet teleprompters run about, I think, about 150 bucks. And what it is, you see right behind it is the camera. And then it shoots through a piece of glass. And you have to... What's not showing in this photograph is you have to have a black cloth over that or you get light on the back side of the, uh, of the glass. So there are videos that I've seen on YouTube uh, and you can Google that on, on, or just look on YouTube and do a search and you can make your own teleprompter if you have a tablet, make your own teleprompter for about $10 using a picture frame and a piece of glass and some black cloth. So it's very simple to do. So once you have the, um, uh, the teleprompter put together, if you're using a, um, a tablet, then you load up your, uh, your script into it. If you have the software, then, you, then, then it'll scroll as you can control it with your wireless mouse. If, if not, if you don't have that software, then you should use um, um, presentation software so that, that you go from slide to slide just with, with your bullet points up there. So this is my laptop setup, and this is much cheaper. So like I said, this was about 25, 30 bucks. Tripod's about another 30 bucks, camera. So I don't have any uh, uh, teleprompter software in this. Uh, I use um, a PowerPoint. And I just put, have big letters, just, you know, just like three lines. And I have my presentation, uh, wireless presentation module, and I just clip, clip through it. And I go down, at some point during my talk, I'll go down and pick up the next point and back to the camera. And if you're moving around a little bit, it looks natural. If your head's going like this, like you're trying to think, and you come back to it and you go to the camera, it'll look real natural. We'll take, that takes a little practice. So I use that a lot. So. The next uh, technique that I use, I call it the redneck teleprompter. <laughs> uh. 
And that's this little item here. <laughs> Post-it notes, pretty high tech. But what I do is I put that right by the camera and I just, here again, I, this is what I did for the promo that I did for this class. This, this is all I did. I wrote out the script, I distilled it down to um, certain bullet points. This was on camera, then I had a section where I was gonna read, and then this was on camera. So I had this, this script right off camera. When I got to the read portion, I picked it up, I read, read that portion, picked it back, put it back down, and finished it off. I did like three takes, and it was done. So that's how quick you can turn these videos out. If you have more than more, if your video is longer than just a minute or so, and you have more content on these, this is post-it note. So I rip these off, I go to the next one, I put them up on the wall around the room. And I give myself some room in my framing so I can move around a little bit. And in editing, you can utilize that, that room that you have by putting up graphics, putting, putting up uh, uh, CG, putting up, up tiles, anything you want to do. So you can move over to this side of the screen and a tile can come up. So, and that doesn't really even have to be planned out ahead of time. But like I said, you can just put these up around the room and I really like it and it is the cheapest way to go. I think you get those things at Sam's Club for about $9 or something like that. So, okay, green screen. You know, who was talking to me about green screen? You were, okay. Uh, it, as it says here, it can be tricky. And uh, before you get into that, Jeremy, um, when I first got in the green screen playing around with it, I bought a big roll of green screens, like, you know, 15 feet wide and 20 feet long. I put it up in, in our uh, living room. And this would be so cool. But it came in a, in a package this big, and it was all folded up. And so you got to unfold it put, it, put it up on the wall. I had thumbtacks I put it up with, and, but it was just covered in wrinkles. And you can't do that on green screen. It's got to be smooth because every wrinkle causes a shadow, which will destroy your effect. So you, I spent like a day and a half with a hand steamer going back and forth over about 400 square feet of green screen. <laughs> this really sucks. And what made it even worse, my wife came up and she said, when are you taking that down? <laughs> no. I said, but honey, <laughs> no, it's not going to stay in my living room. Okay, so that had to come down. So I found this item online. It's, it's a, a, um, a spring-loaded green screen. And this, this has been, just been more fun. <laughs> yeah, it kind of explodes. <laughs> but here we have green screen on one side and blue on the other. So... Why? Because if somebody has green in their clothing, you can't put them in front of a green screen. So that's why we have two different colors. And you can choose that in your, your editing software, how to drop that all out. Green screen can be tricky. Oh, little bright. Yeah, the other way. You shouldn't be this close to it. You should be a few steps away from it. Why? Because you have to light the green screen separately. And then you light the talent. So you don't want, you want a light here and a light here and then the talent standing just a little bit in front of it. And make, make sure that they don't walk off the green screen because they'll disappear. So, or their hands. I've, I've seen video like that before. My God, he just lost his hand! <laughs> so it, it, another thing that's distracting to the viewer. So you, you light it separately and just soft light. And what I like about this, I think this is about 80 bucks or something like that. I can take that to the client's office because the client doesn't have time to come to my studio or go to any other location. He wants to be videoed there. Go to his office, put it up in his office, light it, light him. He does his spiel and we're out of there. And then I can, ha I have a lot of options that are available to, available to me in post-production and putting different things. You can go ahead and put that away. This should be fun. We can watch him. It's, it's not easy. <laughs> yeah, they, in fact, there's a video on YouTube on how to fold these things back up. <laughs> That's what I love about YouTube. I mean, everybody's had, a, had the problem before I did, and they made a video on it. 
So, but they can be tricky and, uh, <laughs> yay! <laughs> <laughs> so it, these are a lot of fun this is kind of down the road for you I'm not saying use this I'm saying think about it but think about it down the road you, get, you got the basics that you got, got to cover first okay but you know you, you could do this and where's that poster board you, you look at this other side of this poster board isn't that cool I mean, you can put products. What I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be doing something I don't know what, but I'm going to say, look at this, and then have some sort of video in there. So <laughs> you're kind of cool. Anyway, um, that's about all I'm going to say about green screen. Um, you really have to, you, you can't use the basic editing software that I'm going to talk to you about. You have to step it up a little bit. And, but it's gotten so easy. When I was, when they first were doing green screen, and they used to call it chroma key, uh, I was in a television station. It'd take a, a room full of engineers to tweak everything and get, get it to, to drop out properly and, and get it to look natural. Now, on my editing software, it's one click. It's gone. And I can put a beach back there. I can put the desert at sunrise. I can do a lot of different stuff. So, <clears throat> and here's where we shoot a lot of our videos. This is my production studio. This is my house. This is my back porch. This is my patio. And, and I really lucked out in this house because the patio faces to the west. And so the sun comes up in the east, obviously. The light bounces off the concrete wall in the back and fills my whole patio with this nice soft light. So there are areas around your house, if you look, that are like this. I bet there are rooms, if you don't have a, a nice backyard, but there are rooms that you, you open up the, the blinds and you get some light in the morning or afternoon or in, during the day. Take a look around for these different locations because, because you want a location that you can control. Now, <clears throat> as for a headshot that we were doing, and this is what it came out after I put it through my editing software. Pretty cool. Nobody knows I'm on my patio. So, okay, we're going to talk about the composition and the psychology of composition. Talked to you quite a bit already about making your viewer uncomfortable. It's one of the biggest mistakes you can make. You have to deliver your message in a, a manner that is appealing to them. And if there's anything about your composition, anything about your audio, your videography, um, your graphics that are jerky, that are jumpy, that if, if somebody says, what was that? You've lost them. You've totally lost them. They're not going to listen to what you have to say anymore. You might as well just delete your video. You've got to keep looking at that video, show it to other people that you trust their opinion. They'll give you their honest opinion to, to, uh, to um, you know, so you're coming up with, with, a, with, a, with a proper video. Now, I'm sure a lot of you already know this, but that's a pretty, pretty bad composition. <laughs> I've seen videos like that. I've seen pictures of people on their websites like this. Folks, this is unexcusable. Look at what you're doing. Look at, at how other people are being seen. You shouldn't be coming to your website. You shouldn't be looking at your video, how great I am. Isn't this cool? You should step back and say, how are other people going to see this? How, what message am I putting out by my, my uh, technology here? So uh, that's just horrible. Um, one thing, can you see that? Oh, yeah, you, you can see that. You see my shirt? That's called a moray pattern. If, if this was video and I would walk, it looked like I'd be in a tat. That thing would just be all over my body. It, it's, it's horrendous. And you think that might take somebody's attention away from your message? No. One of the things in wardrobe, um, and this has changed a little bit because of the, the, the high definition technology, but I used to tell my people, no solid red, no solid white, no solid black, no fine stripes or checks. Big stripes, big checks, fine. The video can handle that. Now it's a little different now with the colors as far with high definition, because the high definition can ho hold 
and can handle the chroma value of a, of a hot red. And it can handle the, um, the dynamic range between a white and a black. So, but it should be, stay away from, especially if you're shooting outside, stay away from white because it's so reflective. It's, it's hard for, for video to handle that. So, <clears throat> this is a little bit better. But you still, if you didn't know me, is, is he kneeling? Is he really that short? You know, so you, you don't know. And these are the thoughts that you should be thinking when you're looking at this. Because your viewer is going to be looking at it and thinking this. Okay, now this is better. But it's what? It's too far away. Television is a close-up medium. You want to be up close and personal. So if I'm looking at this video, I'm feeling that you're kind of distant. You're away from me. Why don't you come closer? So this is what you should have. I mean, if you're in a networking meeting, th this is what you're going to be doing. You're going to be standing to, next to somebody and talking to them. You look, look them right at the eye. And you should not shoot people if, you're, if you cannot see the whites of their eyes. And I don't think you can. Mine, mine are a little blurry eye now. <laughs> but you should be up close and personal. So it's like a conversation. Let's talk a little bit about lighting balance. When I first started out in the business, it, it was all film, and you had to have light meters, and, and you really didn't have any amateurs doing it because the technology was so, um, so beyond a lot of people. Now you have automatic on everything on your cameras, automatic exposure, focus, everything. It tells you when you're not doing it right. I'm surprised it doesn't have anything to correct your, your grammar when you're talking. <clears throat> Even is the best. Now, the automatic exposure controls that you have on, on today's, even the phones and, and the little flip cams and, and uh, Kodak cameras, it's terrific. It really is. In most situations, it will handle everything. But it will not handle that. And uh, apologies to the lady in real estate, but I've, I used to be in real estate, and I've seen a lot of real estate videos and photographs where you see pictures like this. And the windows are all blown out. And they're saying, look at this nice kitchen. You can't see anything. Can't see anything. And, and it's like people are not looking at their product before they're putting it up. So what would, have, what would help here? You either have to cut down the light from the outside or build up the light from the inside. That's the only two options you have. There's um, a film that you could put over the windows to, to neutral density that would uh, knock down the intensity of the outside. See, this is at my home office, and I'm, this is my pool in the background, but you can't even see it. And you don't even know that's me besides glasses. So, um, or you could build up the light on the inside. But with that kind of light outside, you're going to have to have a lot of firepower to get enough exposure in my face to make it balanced. So uh, you can pull down, the, uh, pull down the blinds, pull down the shade, uh, use, use uh, um, artificial lighting. You can do all of that. My suggestion in a situation like this, pick another location. Simple as that. Look around. You know, if you have can lighting in your, in your, um, in your kitchen, that kind of gives you a nice little um, uh, overall light. And all you would need would be another little light, like maybe something like this on my, on my camera, that will pick up their face a little bit. So that, that's all you need. You don't need much. Um, Another thing I suggest for people to do, they don't want to spend a, a, lot, of, a lot of money on lighting equipment. My light kit is four lights in it, and it was $2,400. So you don't need to spend that. Here's a work light, and you can get them at Home Depot on the stands and everything. The problem is it's a 500-watt light. It puts out a harsh light. It, it's, it's very... You don't want it. Shadows, and you get these little things in there, you cross shadows, and kind of spooky looking. So put a piece of uh, wax paper over it. Just like that. It won't melt. It will not melt. So, I mean, if you wrap the light in it, it probably will. But just like this, it won't melt. And it softens everything out. Another thing you can do is, if you have white ceilings, bounce it off the ceiling. There's a lot of different things. You can bounce it off. A card like this. You know, if you need more lights, have like three or four of them up, 
hang a sheet in front of it. There's a lot of things that you can use in your house that will take care of everything. Good. Okay, here's, um, if you're gonna shoot outside, this is full sunlight on my face. Do I look comfortable there? I was not trying to look uncomfortable. But the sun was in my face. <laughs> you know? It was glary. And so it did look uncomfortable. And what I used to solve that is what's called a silk. And Jeremy just held it up just like that. Sun was back there, over there. And yeah, and it just softened everything out. And this is what it came out to be. Don't look more relaxed. Wouldn't you rather listen to something by a person that looked like that instead of this? God, it's like I'm a felon. <laughs> <laughs> so open shade is what I'm trying to get to here. Open shade is the best. Uh, if, if you're shooting a, a woman outside, do not put her in, in front light. Make sure it's backlight. We all need breaks, and the softer the light, the better. I think that was delicate, wasn't it, wasn't it Karen? Is that delicate enough? Okay. <laughs> okay, and here again, there's a um, shot of my back patio. No artificial light, no bounce of anything besides the wall on the other side of the pool. And it's just finding those locations around your, around your house. Okay. Another big mistake here that people use have is they don't use a tripod. What? Well, this was just a still that I grabbed, and it, it, it what? Don't wear glasses. Don't wear glasses. Yeah. With these glasses, I do better in that location than the glasses that were on there. And sometimes you have to take the arms and just tip down a little bit, and just by doing that much, it doesn't look unnatural, but it takes a reflection out. When I was doing Blues Brothers, they had special glasses made that were just flat, that wouldn't be a parabolic and pick up a lot of lights. Of course, when Belushi took his glasses off, he was bleeding to death out of his eyes, so yeah. he never took them off. So, um, anybody see Blair Witch Project? Did you see it in a theater? Good, because you probably would have thrown up. I mean, the, the shaky cam in that set was just so horrendous. I couldn't even watch it on a small screen. That is over with. Do not use, do not trust somebody else to do a handheld. Just don't give it to Aunt Ethel and say, could you take this video of me? I'm going to stand right here. You hold still. It won't be still. It takes a lot of control, a lot of muscle control. Even the, In fact, it's even worse with the little cameras because you really don't have any weight to, to get in there to, to really to brace yourself with. That's why I like my, my big Betacam camera. is like 23 pounds, but you know, I could hold that rock steady. Use a tripod. You can use these little tripods, these ones that I have over here. Uh, you can get a, a, a bigger tripod with a fluid head. This, believe it or not, is only a couple hundred bucks, this whole setup here. So when you, when you get to that stage, um, when I had my Betacam camera, my tripod was $3,500. So you can spend all the money you, you want to spend, but you don't need to. You don't need to spend that money to, to get a quality product. Use a tripod. If you want to zoom and all the way over there, I'd say use your feet. Walk over there and take a, take a picture of it. You know, it's going to be much ple more pleasing. Even on a tripod, there's going to be some shaking on a long lens. So keep that in mind. Now, here's a, a couple tips for you. Are you going to be talking to the camera or off? Now, I'll explain that right here. Uh, and there, it, depending on the, the different script that you have, you, there's different styles that work very well. Now, I'm talking off camera. And you see this on the news all the time. The reporter would be standing over here and be giving the questions to the, um, uh, the person on camera. This works good if you're going to do a short little video. If uh, maybe there's a beginning graphic before I started talking here that said uh, 
Six Flying Media talks about social, uh, search engine optimization. And they cut to this, and I wouldn't even hear a question. I just give like one or two tips about SEO work. Okay, that works very good. The viewer here is the audience, an observer. They're not a participant. Okay, there's a distinction there you should keep in mind. Now, if you want to turn to the camera and talk to the camera and, and deliver a, uh, a, a, a direct message like sign up for my newsletter, that's when you talk right to the camera. That's when you're asking them to do something. You're speaking to them. So the, the other way, talking off camera, if you really cannot get your message put together where you can ad lib it and you need the, um, the, the redneck teleprompter over here, you can have that right off camera. And you can actually be looking at it and reading it if you want to. But make it, make it sound like you're, you're not reading it. Make it sound like you're composing it in your mind as you go along. Now, if you really, you know, what I've been talking about so far and most of the seminar is about is about you or somebody being on camera delivering your message. There are tools out there that you can use that where you don't have to be on camera. And I know people are going to say, I'm going to use that. But people want to see who they're going to be doing business with. They have to know, like, and trust you before they're going to spend time with you, before they're going to spend their money with you. So please at least do one video with you on camera so they can get to know you and get to know your story. But there is a screen capture. Screen capture basically is recording what's on your screen. So once you start the recording going, you can do all, you can bring a video up, you can change graphics, you can do all sorts of stuff. Most people use a PowerPoint presentation and um, They'll use Camtasia and they can uh, record it. It has all the bells and whistles. And this is basically what an interface. Yes, sir? There's no other better software than Camtasia. You like it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. everybody uses it. The downside to it is how much is it? $300. Yeah, $300. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. It, it is great. I'm, I'm glad you had experience. Yes, sir? As far as I know, they don't have a free version. Yeah, yeah, but I've, I've got a free one that I'm coming right up to. So um, I haven't personally used this one, but we got a testimonial from over there. He loves it. So this is what everybody uses that are really involved in, in doing videos for um, sc screen capture. The other, the free version, that's not a version, but it, the, the free product is called Cam Studio. And it's much simpler. The interface is a lot easier to use. It doesn't give you the options. It doesn't give you the control. That's all the things you're giving up. But you're also giving up the $300 price tag. This is free. And the interface is very easy. Once you set it up, you click one button to record. You record to your computer. Then you can take that file and put it in your, your, um, your software editing package and you know, tighten it up and do whatever you want to do. So, but here again, I want, I want to really underscore, you need to have at least one video on your website or one video about your company that you are on the video. And you don't have to be on for the whole thing. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Another one that I've just started playing with is Google+. Anybody on Google, Google+. <laughs> Have you done, done the Hangout? One, yeah. So Google Plus, well, Google owns YouTube. You know that. So, but Google Plus is a useful backdoor to uh, YouTube. You can go on there and start a Hangout. And this is just their term for you know, a, a group conversation. Or you can do it by yourself. You don't have to invite anybody else. But you can record that. You can start the broadcast. And it will automatically be recorded to YouTube. So one click, you've recorded your video, you're on YouTube. Very cool. And there's a lot of business, business aspects or business things you can use for this. Another one is uh, client, 
called me a couple months ago. Have you used uh, that software, that telephone software called Skippy? <laughs> Skippy? <laughs> no? <laughs> oh, Skype. Oh, okay. <laughs> Skype. I have not used that. But I, I have colleagues who have, and they rave about it. I've seen the product that they've done, and I love it. You know, so that's another thing I'm going to be definitely looking at. What you can do with Skype, and there's different add-ons to, to that free software where you can record um, uh, two-sided conversations. So if the other person has Skype on their end and, and a, a webcam, and you've got Skype on your end with a webcam, you can interview them. And so you can see how, you know, Skype, they really promote, it, promote this as, as, you know, keeping in touch with family and friends. But it's a, a great, uh, great tool for business because you, you can, what I like to say, what I like to be is a filter. And what I mean by that is I get about 150 emails a day from different, different um, uh, people on the internet, different uh, marketers. And I'm always looking to try and keep up with stuff and to pass it along to my clients. So what I'm doing is I'm taking stuff that I think that they could use and pass that along to them. So I'm filtering a lot of the technology and putting it in different categories that I think that they can use. So, so if you can be a filter and help your clients along, help your prospects along, it'll be so much better. So now we come down to post-production and the dreaded editing software. Oh, no. Yeah, it's really, really easy. And once you get into it, get that stumbling block out of your way. You'll love it. Basically, they're on your computer, whether it's a Macintosh or a Windows machine, you already have editing software on it. If for some reason your computer didn't come with it, then you can download it for free. Just Google it. Movie Maker for Windows, iMovie for Mac. Uh, when you want more uh, options, more capability, more bells and whistles, uh, then you'd be looking at Sony Vegas Platinum or the Adobe product, which is Premiere Pro uh, Creative Suite 6. Creative Suite 6 just came out. I'm using 5.5. And you wouldn't think that that'd be much of an upgrade from 5.5 to 6, but I've looked at 6, and it's a big upgrade. I'm going, oh, man, it's a lot of money. So um, Vegas, uh, Sony Vegas Plat Platinum, I think, is about 90 bucks, 85, 90 bucks, something like that. Uh, take a look at it. There is, again, there is um, uh, a 30-day trial. I don't know if there's a 30-day trial on Premiere. Is there? Okay. What's the price in that, Jeremy? Do you know? Yeah. A thousand? Over. Yeah. I think. Okay. Yeah, we got the whole um, whole Creative Suite package, which is all sorts of things that I don't know anything about. So. <laughs> so you should take a, take a look at that, and of course, Final Cut Pro if you're on a, on a Mac machine. Here is a typical interface for um, Windows Movie Maker. I don't know if you can see my pointer. Well, anyway, in the upper left-hand corner is your, your, your collections, and that's your library of shots. Uh, the uh, icons here, the six icons in the center, that is, is the clips you're working with. The, uh, the big black square on the right, that's your program monitor. So you can see what you're working with, what you've used, and down below is your timeline, and which shows you the video, top lines of video. Then there's a, below that is a transitions that you've used, below that is an audio track, and below that is a music track, and below that, which is off screen, is your graphics or titles. So this is very basic. It's drag and drop. It really is. You take the shot, you drop it down in your timeline, say, I don't want the beginning, I don't want the end, this is what I want right here. Next shot, you can keep building it. It's drag and drop, it's very easy. And once you understand the user interface of nonlinear editing, which is what this is, all of it looks the same. This is um, Premiere Pro 6, Creative Suite 6, 
And basically, you've got the same. You've got the clip I'm working with in the upper left-hand corner of the program on the right, timeline in the lower right, and other clips in the left. This, of course, has a ton more options and, and bells and whistles than, than Movie Maker does. And you should take a look at this just to say, okay, wow, what does that do? And play around with it. Yes, sir? terms of output, and you have to actually buy a program to be able to convert it properly to an MP4 or an SLD so that you can upload it up to YouTube. Yeah, so I think that you're better off like buying a better program to begin with yeah. and having that output capability versus using yeah. a free program and then having to buy a program yeah. and then convert your output. Yeah. So. There are free conversion programs too that will convert to FLD or, or MP4 that are out there that I've used. Um, is finding a good one. Yeah. There are so many free ones that don't work. Yeah. Right and you bring yeah. up a good point about the free program. You download a free program, and all of a sudden there's strange stuff on your computer you've never. Yeah. So, so you got a good point. But what I'm trying to say is take a look at this and, and at least play around with the editing of Movie Maker so you know the concept of nonlinear editing. So if you want to, want to buy Sony Vegas or one of the Adobe products, you can do that because it, everything looks the same. It just has more capability. The learning curve is going to be a little bit higher. That's why I start out with, uh, with iMovie or... Yes, sir? I don't believe Windows Maker comes on Windows 7, but you can go to Windows Live Essentials and download it for free. Yeah. 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 And Microsoft keeps doing that. It keeps dropping stuff off. Well, what are you going to do? Anyway, some editing tips. If you have special effects uh, on your camera, Turn it off. Do not use it. You may think that, oh, this is cool. I'm, I can have this image come tumbling in and you record it that way. You're stuck with it. You are making an editorial decision in production and you shouldn't do that. Then you don't have any options. If you shoot it with the image coming tumbling in saying that's cool, they come back and, and you put it on your computer and say this really sucks. This is really bad. How am I going to fix this? Now you got a whole new set of problems you got to deal with. So no special effects, unless you're ILM, then, then you can do it. Anybody see the ILM special? Wow, is that something? <laughs> what a story. Anyway, use, use simple uh, transitions. Here, again, I come back to do not distract your viewer. Do not give them a reason to think about something else. Give them a reason to look away. Keep it simple. You should do cuts and dissolves. That's it. Unless you have something special that's coming on for impact, but as a regular basis. I've said, how many of you have been in PowerPoint presentations where every slide is, boom, you know, the sound effects and everything? Are you trying to impress me? Just tell me what, what, what I came here to learn. You know? So simple, very simple tra transitions and no special effects. And I don't think Movie Maker has any special effects, do they? Yeah, not much. But, huh? They have some. They have some? Yeah. Okay. Don't use them. So, simple as that. You know, and even I use Adobe products and I got a ton of stuff I can use. And I say, oh, I'll look at this. Oh, that is awful. It really is. And, and, and just take a look at stuff as, as, your, as your viewer would. Music. Music is really important. Music is um, a, really a personal decision. Um, there's projects that work better without it. There's projects that work better with just a simple, very slow piano or cello. But sometimes you want to pump it up and have a little stinger, a hot trumpet or something like that. Think about it. Think about is it adding or is it detracting from your message? So use it wisely. Do not use copyrighted music, especially if you're going up on YouTube. I did a free video for uh, Surprise Senior Center. They had uh, a Halloween party. All the seniors dressed up in costumes. <laughs> Pretty funny. <laughs> anyway, they had a kind of a conga line around the little day room there, and I was, I was having fun filming, put together on YouTube, and put it up there. And I got an email from YouTube, YouTube Compliance, said, uh, you have copyrighted music on this video, delete it. And I said, what? 
So I, I went on there, and in the background is music for the conga line. And it was like, what was that song? It's Raining Men in Georgia or something? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you know, I wrote back to them. I didn't delete the video because I wasn't in violation. You know, I had no control over that. I didn't put it on there. I was recording an event. So I explained that to them in a very lengthy email and they didn't do anything. But there are people out there that will flag your video. Now, how do people get away with putting copyrighted material? I don't know. Because you see songs all the time on there. And, and you, what's that? Yeah, TV shows and movies and, and uh, uh, especially songs. And, and when you upload a video to YouTube, you have to check the box. I, I own this video. I own all the stuff. You know, there's no nothing in there that nobody owns. You already told everybody how they get away with it. There's 60 hours of video. Yeah. <laughs> That's a true. Yeah, yeah. So use your uh, music wisely, and it should be uh, appropriate to your content, too. Yes, ma'am? Yeah, there's. Yeah. 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 Be careful. A lot of those, if you get an email like that, you want to really do research that you, in fact, did violate something and the, the people contacting you actually own that picture. There's scams out there. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about pictures in, in, in a second here. Um, <laughs> as with, with balancing your lighting, you need to balance uh, the levels of your music. And if it's on your headphones and it sounds fine, but you unplug your headphones and you use external speakers and you cannot understand what you're saying because the music is too loud, you need to take the music down. So really play with the levels. You can, in your editing software, you can bring it up and then take it underneath your narrator or who's ever on camera. So balance your levels and use it wisely. And like I said, there could be projects that you're doing that don't require music that would be better without it. Creative use of titles. Here again, get, you have an opportunity to use a little graphic design to augment your message. Don't take away from it by very gaudy titles, large titles, that are going to be distracting to what's on camera. So you can creatively use titles and use different fonts. Don't get crazy with a lot of different fonts and a lot of different colors, and don't use Comic, comic Sans. <laughs> <laughs> Graphics, Google Images, there are, there's, there's a lot of discussion about uh, once you put a, if a, if, a, if a graphic is up on Google Images, and everybody know what Google Images is? Images.google.com? It's, you can find anything there. And pictures of anything, just about anyway. Yeah, you don't want to find any. You've got to be safe about what you're searching for. <laughs> um, do you have the permission to use it because it's up there? Now, with YouTube, it's, when you're putting a YouTube up there and you're going to standard YouTube license, you are really turning that over to, to anybody who wants to pull it off and use it. So, uh, I mean, you can try and stop them if, if it turns up on a competitor's site or, or they're using it against you or what. You can try and stop it, but you really turned over that right to YouTube once it's up there. Um, with graphics, there are pictures. If it has a watermark on it, you better not use it because that's really, they're saying you right up front, this is a copyrighted image. And you go to download the image from Google, and there's a little statement that says, you better check to see if this image is copyrighted or not. So everybody does it. I've seen the same image on, on many different sites. So it, it, uh, I'm not saying that this is right. What we do for our clients is, is we buy stock photos and stock images that we actually pay for and we get a license to use. And it's, it's cheap. I mean, you, you go to iStock Photo, and for 40 bucks, you can get a lot of images that are the right size for you and everything. So be careful of that. And then we just talked about stock photos. Besides photos, you can buy stock video. And I've done that for clients before, where they, I, there's a piece of video that I really wanted that there's no way that I could capture. 
I went to uh, iStock Photo or one of the other stock companies and bought it. It was like $75. But I, it was like 13 seconds long. It's just what I needed. And it's $75 worth, instead of going out and for another half day shoot, I'd pay the 75 bucks and get high definition video. So distribution. Now, in the post-production, Distribution is really talked about from the very beginning in, in when you're mounting a, a project in motion picture or television. Um, there's no use in having a tremendous product if people aren't seeing it. So you need to get it out to people and there's all sorts of free video sharing sites. These are just a few. Um, one of the things you have to have is a, a free account at each one of these sites that you put a video up at. Uh, YouTube is the big dog in the, in the room, so I mean that's the one you should go to first. Vimeo, Meta Cafe, and there's many, many others. Uh, Yahoo Video, and just a whole lot of them. The problem is you've got to set up the account at every, on every one of these video sharing sites. Uh, I use mainly YouTube, and I use Vimeo and Meta Cafe, but YouTube is the one that, that I use. Why? Who are they owned by? Google. Google. Yeah, that's why. So I, th I don't know, but I think that I might be getting a little bit uh, more bounce for my money by uh, going with a Google product there. So um, if, if you really have a product that you want to get out there uh, to people, there are paid distribution sites, Brightco, Viddler, Traffic Geyser, many others. Traffic Geyser started off as a free site, and then they figured out that they could make money doing it, and that's what they've been doing ever since. So um, what they do, though, besides taking your video and distributing it, they set up accounts for you at all the different sites. So you have to upload the video one time to their site. You select what sites you want to go to because your video is not appropriate for all the video sharing sites out there because there are some sites that are very specific and, and content oriented, like maybe uh, uh, radio control cars or um, you know, things of that nature. So uh, Brightco starts out, I think, about $95 a month. Uh, Viddler is about 50 and I think Traffic Geyser is a program about $95 a month. And it gives you a whole bunch of opportunities to upload as many videos you want to over the month. If you, if you don't upload a lot of videos, you're still paying the 90 bucks or whatever. So uh, they have programs also for you know tens of thousands of dollars a month if you have a lot of products. So those are the opportunities there. Promotion, it should always be in your email signature. And if you don't have your con within your contact information and your email signature, you know, it's a no-brainer. Have a website, your YouTube channel, like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, all those. LinkedIn, the uh, the trinity of um, of uh, social social networking, social marketing. Uh, if you have a newsletter, how many people put out a newsletter? Let me see. Very good. God, this is wonderful. You guys are awesome. Put it in your newsletter. Talk about it. You should be driving traffic to your website. That's the only thing you own. You don't own your YouTube channel. You don't own your Facebook page. You don't own your Twitter account. You are, we are, basically just useful idiots for them to make money. So, but it is a tool that we can use, but they can change the rules and, and your, your uh, postings and your content could be gone. So use everything you can while, while it's there, follow their rules, but drive the traffic to your website. And newsletters are a great way of doing it. <clears throat> Social media, just went over that, uh, it, it is great. Social media is very temporary, and especially Twitter. I mean, it's 140 characters, but, you know, every time I refresh my page, it's all different. So if people aren't looking at that, when, uh, when you're posting, you should uh, think about uh, posting more often. There, there are products uh, like Hootsuite, um, TweetDeck, that's just the one I was trying to think of. TweetDeck, and, um, and you use TweetDeck, yeah. We use Hootsuite. And, uh, what that is, it's you, you do it, you set it and forget it. You do it like on a Saturday morning or something. You put all, all your postings up, what social media profiles you want, want those to go to, and, um, and what, what times you want those to post. If you want the same message, whatever. So Carrie handles that all for us. 
So, um, yeah, and, and it's temporary, and you have to just go out there. Particularly about this class, I think I posted on Facebook about, I posted probably about 40 times. What did you post, Carrie? About the class. How many times? Yeah, so you got quite a bit. And you tr tr if you go to social media, try different times. And with people with newsletters, when do you, when do you send your newsletter out? Thursday morning at 6 a.m. That's working for you. Very well. You've tried other times? Um, one is there in the inbox when they open it up in the morning. Okay. Okay. So you've got your strategy that's working for you. My favorite time was about 8.15 Tuesday morning. I thought that was the best for my newsletter to go out. I've read some research that is saying Saturday and Sunday morning. Why is that? Because people will actually sit down and read it. They have more time than during the work week. These are things that you can test. This would, and this is part of the analytical process that you should be looking at to, to market your business is testing. And with, with the tools that we have on the internet now, there is no reason not to test. It's called A-B testing, but you can do A-B-C-D-E. You, know, you, you don't have to just do two levels of testing. I've been too far afield here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, if you go to uh, sixvine.com slash resources, uh, Jeremy's put up a whole bunch of stuff, tools that we use as far as web design, video production, social media tools, analytics, whatever. So it's things that we use. Some are some cost and some are free. Uh, we've found basically that a lot of the free stuff we use, but we also use the paid stuff that we um, that does kind of the same thing only better like uh, know what the keyword tool is in, in Google you've used that before yeah I see one head going so okay good okay there's a better tool than that called market samurai which which we have uh, what's that cost Jeremy 150 yeah, yeah. 150, but once you once you had bought it, you bought it. You know, just like uh, with with the editing software. So, t you know, take a look at those different tools um, that we use. Now, I've given you a lot of options today, and I see most of you are still awake, and I'm not seeing any glazed over looks, so I haven't gotten too techy on you. I hope, because that's not my intention is to impress you. My intention is to inform you and educate you, so you can get out there and do this yourself. So. So here's your step-by-step -step action plan, which is in your handout. So, but we'll be going over that. Your belief structure is so important. If you do not believe you can do this, you, you can't do it. You just can't do it. You've got to believe it. You've got to believe in yourself. Folks, there's really no mystery to this. You can do this. And if you're doing it already, you can do it better by standing back and looking at it as a, as a viewer. Pull up that courage. That's what it's going to take, especially when you turn the camera on and you're in front of it. Like I said, I've been doing this for years, and, and the other day, Jeremy was helping me, and I was doing this and doing my, my redneck teleprompter, and he was just standing there looking, looking at the script, and then out of the corner of my eye, he just went like this and looked at me. I said, what? what I do? I'm that fragile, and I've been doing this for a long time, so don't think you're going to be a pro at it. Do it. <laughs> and define your customer. Not the global customer, but who are you talking to in this video? Who are you talking to? If you, if you are dealing with people that want to lose weight, if that's your message, your message is going to be different for the person that wants to lose 60 pounds. That's going to be diff that message is going to be different than the athlete that wants to get down a single digit body fat. They both want to lose weight. But the message is different. Tailor it to them. Let, let them show, show them that you understand them and, and uh, their issues and you can help them. Be a storyteller. I've heard a lot of stories from me today. Hopefully I've 
given you some uh, a feeling that you know I'm not just some guy up here to sell you something. I'm, I'm really have a passion for helping you, and that's Hit your mark. where. Oh, <laughs> don't they have a joystick on that thing? <laughs> Hit the marks and say the jokes. Okay, uh, write the script. We've gone over that many times. Bullet point it, distill it, rehearse it. Use a, a jumbo post-it note, just like, like I've done many times and I still do. It, it's the simplest way, it's the easiest way. Simple and easy are the same thing, but cheap. Okay, and you have to decide whether you're going to use a camera or a phone. That's up to you. You try your phone, but you need an external microphone, so make sure you use that. Buy a tripod. Can't get by without it. Cannot get by without it. Open shader inside, and like I said, you know, walk around your house with a photographic mindset. Is this going to work? Is there too much clutter in the background? Can I take some of that away? You don't want a blank wall. It looks like you're at an institution of some kind. So you want something that says home or office, not behind your desk. Come on, you know better than that. So if you're going to shoot it in your office, get out in front of your desk and sit on your desk. Okay? You got, you got to be comfortable. You know, you, you don't want to distract, and you have to smile. Do several takes. That's what editing is all about. Taking those pieces of those takes that work best, that you've got a strong delivery. And don't forget your call to action. Every video should have a call to action. You want the person to do something. Do you want them to sign up for your newsletter? Do you want them to click on the button below to buy something? Do you want them to call? What do you want them to do? Don't rely on them to come up with a call to action for you. And I see that a lot. You have a great video, and the viewer says, oh, that was nice. What's next? They're gone. Ask them to do something. Give, if it's a call to action that you want to sign them up for a newsletter, give them a gift, give them a video, give them a white paper, give them some research that you've done, give them something free. You're a resource. That's why they're on your website. Transfer footage to your computer. Now, this, is, this can be a, a stumbling block from a lot of people. A lot of these cameras have just USB inputs and so you just plug it in your computer and you're good or you can you know plug your phone into a USB cable and 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 do it that way so if you need help get some help on this or or my favorite resource is YouTube there's always somebody out there especially with editing I I'm going I'm scratching my head and trying to how do you do this I've seen it I've seen it done before how do you do it and I go on YouTube and I type in my, my question and say, uh, you know, and how do you do this with, with Adobe Premiere 6? And there's a video on it. The internet is terrific for, you know, people helping each other. So you should look at, at, at the uh, products you buy, Sony Vegas and Premiere product, but use Movie Maker or iMovie to get going. Yes? Okay, and this is a DVD you got from where? Uh, it's, uh, I have a DVD recorder, and it's just a raw DVD, just oh, okay. off TV or okay. whatever, and then go in and try to, you know, make a movie or, you know, make a little clip out of it or whatever. Okay. Uh, I've had to do that in kind of like a three-step process before. I've, I've transferred the, the content of the DVD to my computer. Then I've had to, to go in to look at, uh, in fact, I think I, I, I found it on YouTube on, on how to get that file to my, um, my editing software. Once I put it over my editing software, then, then you can uh, render it out as anything you want to. So, but take, take a look at YouTube. Okay. You, know. um, you use, use uh, the editing software to make it tight. You want to take out the ums, take out the 
places where your eyes are going like this, you're trying to think of the next thing. So you, you don't want that, but that's what editing is. You make it tight. It, when you're in post-production, when you're editing, you are really got control of time. You can make that whole thing longer. You can make it shorter. You can make it zippier. You can do a lot of things with it. It's whatever, you, whatever you, uh, your goal is. And when you... You're doing the editing, you're going to have some rough edits there. So what you want to do is you want to use stills or B-roll. Everybody know what B-roll is? B-roll is if I am talking about um, the people who I've got a cabinet making shop and, and I'm talking about the, the skill of my craftsmen who are doing the cabinet making, what's going to sell better than pictures of the craftsmen doing the um, the making of the cabinet. So as I'm talking about that, my voice is still on camera. It's now become a voiceover, and I'm showing pictures of the cabinet maker. So that's B-roll. Anything, any other extraneous footage that you shoot to support your your message or your person on camera. So you still as B-roll or graphics. And decide on the music. We talked about that. Create an open and cl closed graphic? Well, maybe. There is a lot of research, uh, people, not research, but there are a lot of opinions on the internet that said that you shouldn't have an open and closed graphic. You should just go right to your message. People don't want to sit through an, a graphic that says, okay, now you're going to hear about this. You know, I'm kind of old school on that because I, I want to kind of set them up for what I'm going to tell them. I want to tell them what I'm going to tell them. I'm going to tell them, and then I'm going to tell them what I told them. So I'm just kind of reinforcing that all the way along. That's my opinion. So you'd have to look at it to see uh, if it works for you or not. As far as your ending graphic, uh, do not do a fade out at the end because all these video sharing sites are programmed to grab the last, last still of video to hold that. And if your last still of video is black, you're not, your message still isn't up on the screen. So if you just do a straight cut to black, the last picture up there will be your graphic or you or whatever. So upload to YouTube. Um, that's, like I said, that's the big dog in the room. That's what we go to all the time. Biggest way you can, you can um, help people find your videos is load your description with keywords. And everything you get to do, every place you put the video, put your keywords. But you've got to know what your keywords are. And that's where tools like um, uh, Google Keyword Research comes in where you can type in what you think people are looking for and see what kind of, of traffic that, that, that is driving. So, in, of course, embed the video on your website because your website is the only thing that you really own. And send it to your email list. Start a conversation. Uh, say, here's my new vi video. Let me know what you think of it. Put it in your email signature. We already talked about, talked about that. Upload it to other sites. Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and like I said before, these are, LinkedIn hangs around more than the other two, but you've just got to keep posting to these. And give it uh, maybe three days or just you know, several times a day going to it at different times of the day. Try the weekends. Try later at night. Some people don't get on the computer until 8, 9, or 10 o'clock at night, and then they start surfing the, the social media sites. So once, it, once that is all done, whew, have a cocktail. Settle down. And while you're having that cocktail, outline your next video. <laughs> and do it all over again in two weeks. So here's a special gift for you guys today. If you, when you get back home, go to sixfine.com, sign up for a newsletter. You'll have immediate access to an in-depth training video that Jeremy did on selecting a domain, all the research that goes into that. Now, you could have your own company name as your domain, but there are other domains out there that could benefit you by selecting those, acquiring those, and pointing those to your main site. So that's all explained in the video. The video is about 40 minutes long, but it, it, once you have access to it, you can go back and take a look at it and make notes and everything. And these, this kind of um, research and, and getting the, um, the domains does very well in the search engine. So with that... I want to thank you for your time. I really appreciate you being here. The what? The survey. Okay. You've got a survey and you need to fill that out or Debbie won't let you out the door. She's got a Rottweiler out there.
So, <laughs> so I really appreciate you being here today, and uh, I have tremendous faith in you guys can do this. So please, please give it a try. Just don't shake your head and say, I can't do it. So God bless you all, and thank you.